Angiotensin II Receptor Blocker, Wikipedia Article Audio Angiotensin II Receptor Blockers, also known as Angiotensin II Receptor Antagonists, at one receptor antagonists or sartans, are a group of pharmaceuticals that modulate the renin angiotensin system. Their main uses are in the treatment of hypertension, diabetic nephropathy, and congestive heart failure. They block the activation of AT1 receptors, preventing the binding of angiotensin II. Angiotensin II receptor blockers are used primarily for the treatment of hypertension where the patient is intolerant of ACE inhibitor therapy. They do not inhibit the breakdown of bradykinin or other kinins, and are thus only rarely associated with the persistent dry cough and slash or angioedema that limit ACE inhibitor therapy. More recently, they have been used for the treatment of heart failure in patients intolerant of ACE inhibitor therapy, in particular candesartan. Irbesartan and losartan have trial data showing benefit in hypertensive patients with type 2 diabetes, and may delay the progression of diabetic nephropathy. A 1998 double-blind study found that lisinopril improved insulin sensitivity whereas losartan did not affect it. Candesartan is used experimentally in preventive treatment of migraine. Lisinopril has been found less often effective than candesartan at preventing migraine. Medical Uses History The angiotensin II receptor blockers have differing potencies in relation to blood pressure control, with statistically differing effects at the maximal doses. When used in clinical practice, the particular agent used may vary based on the degree of response required. Some of these drugs have a uricosuric effect. In one study after 10 weeks of treatment with an ARB called Losartan, 88% of hypertensive males with sexual dysfunction reported improvement in at least one area of sexuality and overall sexual satisfaction improved from 7.3% to 58.5%. In a study comparing beta-blocker carvedilol with valsartan, the angiotensin II receptor blocker not only had no deleterious effect on sexual function, but actually improved it. Other ARBs include candesartan, telmisartan, and valsartan, femasartan. Angiotensin II, through AT1 receptor stimulation, is a major stress hormone and, because block these receptors, in addition to their eliciting antihypertensive effects, may be considered for the treatment of stress-related disorders. In 2008, they were reported to have a remarkable negative association with Alzheimer's disease. A retrospective analysis of 5 million patient records with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs system found different types of commonly used antihypertensive medications had very different AD outcomes. Those patients taking angiotensin receptor blockers were 35-40% less likely to develop AD than those using other antihypertensives. Structure Losartan, Irbesartan, Almesartan, Candesartan, Valsartan, Femasartan, and Azilsartan include the tetrazole group. Losartan, Irbesartan, Almesartan, Candesartan, and Telmisartan include one or two imidazole groups. These substances are at one receptor antagonists, that is, they block the activation of angiotensin II at one receptors. Blockage of AT1 receptors directly causes vasodilation, reduces secretion of vasopressin, and reduces production and secretion of aldosterone, among other actions. The combined effect reduces blood pressure. Mechanism of Action The specific efficacy of each ARB within this class depends upon a combination of three pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic parameters. 
Efficacy requires three key PD slash PK areas at an effective level, the parameters of the three characteristics will need to be compiled into a table similar to one below, eliminating duplications and arriving at consensus values, the latter are at variance now. Pressor inhibition at trough level, this relates to the degree of blockade or inhibition of the blood pressure raising effect of angiotensin II. However, pressor inhibition is not a measure of blood pressure lowering efficacy per SC. The rates as listed in the US FDA package inserts for inhibition of this effect at the 24th hour for the ARBs are as follows. At 1 affinity VS at 2 is not a meaningful efficacy measurement of BP response. The specific at 1 affinity relates to how specifically attracted the medicine is for the correct receptor. The US FDA PI rates for at 1 affinity are as follows. Pressor inhibition. The third area needed to complete the overall efficacy picture of an ARB is its biological half life. The half lives from the US FDA PIs are as follows AT1 affinity. This class of drugs is usually well tolerated. Common adverse drug reactions include, dizziness, headache, and slash or hyperkalemia. Infrequent ADRs associated with therapy include, first dose orthostatic hypotension, rash, diarrhea, dyspepsia, abnormal liver function, muscle cramp, myalgia, back pain, insomnia, decreased hemoglobin levels, renal impairment, pharyngitis, and slash or nasal congestion. Biological Half-Life While one of the main rationales for the use of this class is the avoidance of dry cough and slash or angioedema associated with ACE inhibitor therapy, rarely they may still occur. In addition, there is also a small risk of cross-reactivity in patients having experienced angioedema with ACE inhibitor therapy. The issue of whether angiotensin II receptor antagonists slightly increase the risk of myocardial infarction is currently being investigated. Some studies suggest ARBs can increase the risk of MI. However, other studies have found ARBs do not increase the risk of MI. To date, with no consensus on whether ARBs have a tendency to increase the risk of myocardial infarction, further investigations are underway. Drug Comparison and Pharmacokinetics Indeed, as a consequence of at one blockade, ARBs increase angiotensin II levels several fold above baseline by uncoupling a negative feedback loop. Increased levels of circulating angiotensin II result in unopposed stimulation of the AT2 receptors, which are, in addition, upregulated. However, recent data suggest AT2 receptor stimulation may be less beneficial than previously proposed, and may even be harmful under certain circumstances through mediation of growth promotion, fibrosis, and hypertrophy as well as eliciting protherogenic and pro-inflammatory effects. A study published in 2010 determined that, meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials suggests that ARBs are associated with a modestly increased risk of new cancer diagnosis. Given the limited data, it is not possible to draw conclusions about the exact risk of cancer associated with each particular drug. These findings warrant further investigation. A later meta-analysis by the FDA of 31 randomized controlled trials comparing ARBs to other treatment found no evidence of an increased risk of incident cancer, cancer-related death, breast cancer, lung cancer, or prostate cancer in patients receiving ARBs. In 2013, Comparative effectiveness research from the United States Department of Veterans Affairs on the experience of more than a million veterans found no increased risks for either lung cancer or prostate cancer.
The researchers concluded in this large nationwide cohort of United States veterans, we found no evidence to support any concern of increased risk of lung cancer among new users of ARBs compared with non-users. Our findings were consistent with a protective effect of ARBs. In May 2013, a senior regulator at the Food and Drug Administration, medical team leader Thomas A. Marciniak, revealed publicly that contrary to the FDA's official conclusion that there was no increased cancer risk, after a patient-by-patient -patient examination of the available FDA data he had concluded that there was a lung cancer risk increase of about 24% in ARB patients, compared with patients taking a placebo or other drugs. One of the criticisms Marciniak made was that the earlier FDA meta-analysis did not count lung carcinomas as cancers. In 10 of the 11 studies he examined, Marciniak said that there were more lung cancer cases in the ARB group than the control group. Ellis Unger, chief of the drug evaluation division that includes Dr. Marciniak, was quoted as calling the complaints a diversion and saying in an interview, we have no reason to tell the public anything new. In an article about the dispute, the Wall Street Journal interviewed three other doctors to get their views, one had no doubt ARBs increased cancer risk, one was concerned and wanted to see more data, and the third thought there was either no relationship or a hard-to-detect, low-frequency relationship. Knockout of the AGTR1A gene that encodes at one results in marked prolongation of the lifespan of mice by 26% compared to controls. The likely mechanism is reduction of oxidative damage and overexpression of renal prosurvival genes. The ARBs seem to have the same effect. Losartan and other ARBs regress liver, heart, lung, and kidney fibrosis. Adverse Effects A 2003 study using candesartan and valsartan demonstrated an ability to regress dilated aortic root size. Myocardial Infarction, The Controversy Valsartan 80 mg 30%, Telmisartan 80 mg 40%, Losartan 100 mg 25-40%, Irbisertin 150 mg 40%, Irbisertin 300 mg 60%, Isilsertin 32 mg 60%, Almisertin 20 mg 61%, Almisertin 40 mg 74%. Losartin 1000 fold, Telmisertin 3000 fold, Irbisertin 8500 fold. Candesartan greater than 10,000 fold, Almisartan 12500 fold, Valsartan 30,000 fold, Saprizartan. Cancer risk factors Longevity promotion, Fibrosis regression, Dilated aortic root regression, Valsartan 6 hours, Losartan 6 9 hours. Is Ilsertin 11 hours, Irbisertin 11 15 hours, Almisertin 13 hours, Telmisertin 24 hours, Femacertin 7 11 hours.